coming up tonight on SLU News 22. SLU's first lay president. How Ted Mosby finally met their mother. More on the Malaysian Airlines flight. And opening day politics. Plus, national news and weather live from the Bush Student Center. This is SLU News 22. Good evening, I'm Sean Everson. And I'm Gabriel J. Gallup. Thank you for joining us this evening. SLU students, staff, faculty, family, friends, and alumni are invited to compete or to cheer at the Office of International Services second annual International Soccer Festival this Saturday, April 5th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The event will take place on the practice field located at the corner of Vandeventer and Laclede. The event will feature a six-on-six round-robin tournament with prizes for the winners, as well as lawn games, music, trivia, and giveaways for fans. To register, students must complete the registration form and send it in with a $16 registration fee. For more information, go to www.slu.edu slash 45-international-soccer-festival or contact Annie Rosendrans at A-R-O-S-E-N-K-R at slu.edu. This week, March 31st through April 4th, St. Louis University will host several events promoting awareness of global issues for the 14th annual Sam and Marilis Fox Atlas Week. The theme for this year's events is ign education, igniting the flames of change. The main goals of the Atlas program is to increase global awareness of the awareness of global issues in an effort not only to promote discussion, but also to inspire action. For a full list of events, make sure you pick up a passport, which are located several places throughout campus. The keynote address will be on Thursday, April 3rd, by Shibana Baji Raja, co-founder and president of School of Leadership Afghanistan. She will talk about her efforts in educating women in Afghanistan. Jill is in the Weather Center for our first forecast. Jill, it was warm this morning, it was windy this morning, and we even saw a few showers. Will those showers be around tonight? You know, Sean, we are actually seeing, looking at the radar right now, we're seeing those showers moving out of the state of Missouri and into even eastern Illinois, and that will continue in, as we move through the overnight tonight. We are just seeing a few light uh, rain showers, even a few thunderstorms popping up in southeastern Missouri, but everything seems to be clearing up here in St. Louis. As Sean was mentioning, a very warm day today, even warm out there right now. It is currently 64 degrees in downtown St. Louis. Much the same in short eastern communities as well. A warm spots are actually in the valleys where in Chesterfield and also St. Charles are still in the mid to even upper 60s at this hour. As we move overnight tonight, all those rain showers are going to be moving out, just leaving us with some mostly cloudy skies. Those breezy conditions will continue overnight tonight. We see winds gusting anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour, even gusting as high as 26 miles an hour as we dip down into the mid 40s overnight tonight. A little bit of a cooler day on Tuesday, right around 60 degrees for a high temperature. But as we begin the month of May, we're going to be seeing some showers and thunderstorms moving through late Tuesday, and that'll continue in even throughout the day into late Thursday as well. It will be warm, however, through midweek, and it's just the much needed rainfall that we'll be experiencing through me through midweek. I'll be back with more details about these showers and thunderstorms we'll be seeing through the rest of the week. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Jill. SLU night at the ballpark will be on April 8th. The Cardinals will take on the Reds at 715. If you're waiting to get your ticket, you're out of luck because the Student Involvement Center tweeted out this afternoon that they are completely sold out. The SLU mobile app was updated last week to add a course catalog feature and students can now get ready for registration by viewing a mobile-friendly version of class information including instructors and enrollment counts. Registrations for courses will continue in Banner Self Service. Download the update from your phone's app store or visit the mobile website at m.slu.edu. SLU Facility Services is looking for your feedback regarding campus conditions, general satisfaction with services, and the work order process. Members of the SLU community can fill out an online survey for the chance to win a free green Billiken t-shirt. You can find a link to the survey at newslink.slu.edu. St. Louis University and Washington University's med medical school begin their battle for the boot challenge this year with UMSL joining in for the first time. The competing school students donate new and used shoes to be given to Kenya and Haiti. Additional funds are used to build wells and water systems in those countries. The drive will run on SLU's campus until May 31st. Coming up, we'll have more local and international news. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Dr. Fred Pastello was named the 33rd president of St. Louis University on March 21st. He is the first permanent lay president in the university's 196 year history. Last week, he sent a letter addressed to students, faculty, and staff recapping his visits with the SLU community and his general excitement about joining the SLU community. Pastello will assume SLU's presidency on July 1st. A new United Nations report, along with other councils, claimed that the threat of climate disaster as a result of global warming has become significantly higher at a much faster rate than originally anticipated. The change in climate over the recent years has been linked to both flooding and droughts across the planet. The report also recommended in changing the climate risk assessment panel by adding a very high to show a more disastrous level of risk than the high setting. One of the report's co-authors, Patricia Marolanko of the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado, wrote, we have a closing window of opportunity. We do have choices. We need to act now. The city of St. Louis wants you to go to the Go St. Louis Marathon and Family Fitness Weekend this Sunday at 7 a.m. at Soldiers Morrow Plaza at the corner of Chestnut and North 15th Street. Come out and support healthy lifestyles in the St. Louis metropolitan area with races for all ages and fitness levels. All participants will receive a finisher's medal, a t-shirt, and not to mention post-race refreshments. Again, that is this Sunday, April 6th at 7 a.m. After 208 episodes, How I Met Your Mother will come to an end tonight during an hour-long finale on CBS at 7 p.m. One thing viewers can be absolutely certain of is it is that Ted Mosby will finally meet the future mother of his children, and the nine-year-long story that future Ted has been telling his kids will finally be over. Jason Segal, who plays Marshall on this show, says that this is potentially the best finale of any show ever. More and more information about the missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 continues to be released. The flight, which disappeared en route to Beijing, has been heavily speculated on both laymen, by both laymen and officials. Today, officials have revised the account of the last words that came from the cockpit of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The Malaysian Department of Civil Aviation said that the last communication with the air traffic controller was, quote, good night, Malaysian 370. End quote. Authorities also said they are still conducting a forensic investigation to, to determine who was talking, even though it appeared the co-pilot was the speaker. Since the beginning of the investigation, there have been several false leads in conflicting information. Coming up, your work week forecast. Stay tuned. And welcome back. Chief Meteorologist Jill Sweat is here with us now for our extended forecast. Jill, today is opening day for baseball. The Cardinals are out of town, but they will be back next Monday. Right. But there's all this talk of showers and thunderstorms all throughout this week. Will they be gone by the time the Cardinals are You know what? Home? We're really hoping so. And it would be kind of nice if Mother Nature would play, you know, a kind of similar day to what we saw today, minus maybe the few passing rain showers that we saw this afternoon. But overall, it was a great day today. Officially at Lambert, we reached a high temperature of 69 degrees just shy of that 70 degree mark. It was a little bit of a chillier start this morning as we started off in the mid to upper 40s across the region. But officially, we were above normal, and our normals th for this day at the end of March are 62 for a high temperature and 42 for a low temperature. As I mentioned, we were seeing some light rain showers. Even a few rumbles of thunder were heard late this afternoon. That line of showers and thunderstorms are moving off to the east. They have cleared out of St. Louis. We are still seeing a few light rain showers, even some thunderstorms even as well embedded into southeastern Missouri, but that will all be moving through as we head overnight tonight. We are right now still under cloudy skies. The temperature officially at Lambert is 68 degrees. We are still seeing some gusty winds out of the south. They're right now registering at 13 miles an hour, but gusting all the way to 21. And we'll continue to see those breezy conditions as we, oh, hang, as we move through overnight tonight, and those clouds will be hanging tough as well. By 10 o'clock this evening, we'll be at 60 degrees. By wake up tomorrow morning, we're dealing with mostly sunny skies. Our temperature in the mid-40s again to start the day, but then we'll quickly be warming up. We'll be right around 60 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow. We are going to see that cold front move through. That's what's pushing all those showers and thunderstorms through this evening. Behind it, a mild day tomorrow, but a little bit cooler than what we saw today. We'll be right around 60 for a high temperature tomorrow under mostly sunny skies. Things will get interesting as we move through midweek. We will be seeing a warm front just to our south. Now, that has put us into the slight risk category for some severe weather on Wednesday and even continuing throughout the day on Thursday until late Thursday evening. 
So we could be seeing rounds of some showers, even some strong thunderstorms, and we can't rule out the possibility of some severe storms as well, especially on Wednesday. And with all this rain moving through, we're going to see quite a good deal of rainfall through Thursday night. We actually need some rain. We're running a little bit of a deficit, if you can believe it, given all the snow that we saw early this year. Here in St. Louis, we could see anywhere from two and a half to three inches. Now that's from today through Thursday evening, but still some much needed rainfall, but a lot of rain is headed our way over the next several days. But overnight tonight, no rain. We'll just be dealing with some mostly cloudy skies and breezy conditions, however. Our winds will be out of the south to southwest, five to 10 miles an hour, but gusting upwards to 25 miles an hour. We dipping down into the mid 40s overnight tonight. A pretty great day tomorrow, a little bit cooler than what we saw yesterday. We'll be at 60 degrees for a high temperature under mostly sunny skies. Once we get past tomorrow, unfortunately, it's just showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. Some of these storms moving through could be strong to even severe. We'll be seeing lots of rain. We're not going to rule out even some gusty winds or some small hail as well as these storms move through, especially on Wednesday, much of the same on Thursday. But by the end of the week, things will start to dry out. We'll just be dealing with some partly sunny skies on Friday. A little bit cooler, though, however, on the Friday, only below 60s and even cooler, unfortunately, as we move into the weekend. But clearing skies, and hopefully that will stick with us until Monday, which is the home opener for our Cardinals. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jill. So mm -hmm. hopefully those students don't bring your umbrellas tomorrow, but maybe right midweek. Midweek you'll need it. Um, you know, it's going to be warm, so you're not probably not going to need the rain jacket, but definitely the umbrella. However, with those gusty winds, as we found, umbrellas don't do a whole lot. <laughs> so maybe just pack the rain gear through midweek. All right. Thanks, Jill. Up next, the final four and opening day politics. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Though your bracket may be busted, the NCAA men's final four is set. Florida will take on Connecticut and Wisconsin will square off against Kentucky for a trip to the national championship. The games tip off Saturday evening from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. They will be televised on TBS. The championship game can be seen on CBS the following Monday, April 7th. In February, Anheuser-Busch and Ozzie Smith announced a petition to get baseball's opening day officially recognized as a national holiday. A month and 100,000 signatures from baseball fans everywhere later, the White House has announced its position on the petition. The White House said it is neither within the jurisdiction of the White House nor does the Obama administration support the motion to make Major League Baseball's opening day a national holiday. With opening day pitches occurring just a few hours ago, baseball fans everywhere will be glued to their television sets and radios, hoping that their team will be crowned baseball's world championships. Go Mets! Today is opening day, as Gabriel said, for Major League Baseball, which means Cardinals baseball is back. St. Louis begins their season on the road in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh before returning home Monday, April 7th against the Reds. Currently, the Cardinals just wrapped up their first game. Adam Wainwright pitches seven scoreless innings, and his seventh-inning home run by Yadier Molina gives the Cardinals a one to nothing victory to start off the season. Evidence has been shown that the more we use credit and debit cards instead of cash, the less crime there will be. Researchers at the University of Missouri-St. Louis looked at what happened to crime rates when the Missouri switched from handing out welfare checks to depositing welfare on debit cards. They found that burglary larceny and assault went down. A criminologist at Elmsville, Richard Wright, said that this made sense because credit cards do not make for much on the street because you are more likely to get caught and less likely to be able to use the cards. This move from paper to plastic could be one of the reasons why crime in St. Louis and in the United States has been trending down for a quarter of a century. During a routine traffic stop in O'Fallon, Missouri on Saturday, the reporting officer noticed a strong smell of marijuana coming from the car. After obtaining a warrant and bringing in a search dog, nine bundles of marijuana were discovered weighing over 200 pounds in total. Matthew Serrano and Vista Scott, both from New Mexico, were arrested and charged with accessory trafficking and drugs and attempt to traffic in the second degree. Each have a $100,000 bond. Well, opening day is underway. The Cardinals got their win this afternoon and earlier today. Jill, your Pirates. My Pirates won in walk-off fashion. Oh, my gosh, it was a great game. I mean, I know you guys probably don't want to hear about the Pirates, you know, Cardinals-Pirates rivalry now, but it was a good day to be a Pittsburgh sports fan. <laughs> I'll have to say that. And it was a pretty great day weather-wise here in St. Louis, even though the Cardinals weren't playing here. Hopefully by next Monday when it is the home opener, much of the same. As we move through the rest of this week, one more calm day tomorrow. 
But then it'll be a little bit of a bumpy ride through midweek as we'll be dealing with some showers and thunderstorms Wednesday and Thursday. Some thunderstorms on Wednesday could turn severe, so definitely have to be watching that. Just pack the rain gear, just be on standby for any showers or thunderstorms to move through. But as we head into the end of the week and the start of the weekend, things will be drying up and clearing out. A little bit of a chillier start to the week end, though. But hopefully much of the same will continue into the start of next week. Right. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can always get the latest movie reviews and news online at slutv.slu.edu or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We will be back here next week at 6 p.m. Have a great week.